Welcome to Electron Online, and in this video, we're going to take another look at how to find the potential difference, the voltage across an inductor. Now, it's kind of a confusing thing, and so this hopefully will help us figure that out for good. So here we have four inductors, actually. It's four times the same inductor. And in the, in the top two cases, we have current going from left to right. In the bottom two cases, we have the current going from right to left. And the way I always think about it is probably easier to just simply follow the current. So we're going to look at it in terms of following the direction of the current. In the top case, when the current is going from left to right, the current is increasing. In the second case, with the current going from left to right, the current is decreasing. Here, the current is going from right to left, and the current is increasing. There, the current is going from right to left, and the current is decreasing. So here we go, I increasing, I decreasing, I increasing, and I is decreasing. And we're going to keep the direction of the current steady in a way that we're going to follow, I should say, the direction of the current in each case. So, also here's the equation that actually calculates the potential difference. E is the EMF, the voltage across the inductor, is the negative of the, of the self-inductance or the inductance of the inductor times the change in the current. So here you already have an idea that if the change in the current is positive, greater than zero, if the current is increasing, then the potential difference across the inductor is negative. Well, when we follow it in the direction of the current, and that's the important part, so if we, we go from one side to the other side of the inductor, we follow that path in the same direction as the current flow, then we can say that potential difference across it is negative if the, if the change in the current is positive, if it's a positive change, if the current is increasing. So in this case, going from left to right, the current is increasing, the DIDT is positive, so the current is increasing, therefore the potential difference or the voltage across it should be negative. So it's a voltage drop across that. That means there's a higher potential here than there's there. As so you go across the inductor, there's a voltage drop. The voltage diminishes. It's kind of like what happens with a resistor. If the current flows from left to right and there's a resistor there, it regards the force for resistor because resistors only oppose the current, while inductors only oppose the change in the current. So for an inductor, just like a resistor, if you follow the current, the voltage will drop across the resistor when you follow the current direction. And with an inductor, the voltage will drop across the inductor if the current is increasing. Therefore, if you follow the direction of the current and the current is decreasing, it's getting smaller, that means that the DIDT is a negative, the negative cancel the negative, and the voltage is actually a voltage rise. It's a positive quantity. So following the direction of the current across an inductor, when the current is decreasing, we see a voltage rise. Remember, that is in the direction of the current. It's kind of like a battery, because if the current diminishes, if the current decreases, the inductor will jump into action and try to oppose that decrease. In other words, it will set up a self-inductance to try and force the current in the same direction, continue the current going, keep it from decreasing, so it begins to act like a battery. So here it acts like a resistor, there it acts like a battery. Now, let's reverse the current. Now we go from right to left, and the current is increasing. Well, in the direction of the current, if the current is increasing, that's the positive quantity, then the voltage will be a negative quantity, it will be a voltage drop. So moving in the direction of the current from right to left, it is called, therefore, a voltage drop. And, again, in the same direction, moving from right to left, in the direction of the current, if the current is decreasing, then we'll have a voltage rise. And maybe one way to denote that, so we can see that there's going to be voltage drop, that means on this side is a higher potential, on this side is a lower potential. Here it's a voltage rise, so this side is a lower potential, this side is a higher potential. Here, again in the direction of the current, the voltage drop means it's a higher potential here and a lower potential there, and here it's a voltage rise, so it's a lower potential here and a higher potential there. And that's the best way to look at it. Again, if the current is decreasing, an inductor acts like a battery. It tries to keep the current flowing in the same direction. 
if the, if the, the current is increasing, then the inductor tries to oppose an increase and it kind of acts like a resistor, except it acts against the increase in the current where a resistor acts against the current period. So that's how you can very easily figure out when you have voltage rise and when you have a voltage drop across the inductor. And in my opinion, the best way to follow it is simply follow in the direction of the current. If the current increases, voltage drop. If the current decreases, voltage rise. That's the best way to think about it.